Hello, it's Scott Manley here with some more sciencing in Kerbal Space Program for beginners. We are in low lunar orbit. We have our science lab, we have our lander, and we are going to do as much sciencing as it will let us. Right now, we want to fill this with data, and then over time, the data will be converted to science so we can deliver it back to Kerbin to be converted into awesome rockets and stuff. So, of course, this includes EVA data, which we're collecting from uh, the moon. Oh, wait, and this is the material study, which was processed by the lab. Just store that, get back inside, and let's see what other data we have to dump into the lab. This crew report will give us 19 data, which will, of course, convert to five times that, or 95 science. And then we can transmit the remaining back to Corbin. So... Uh, it's a good idea to collect the data, put it into the lab, and then send it back, only then, right? And this can actually lead to a problem where you actually run out of space in the lab. Now, another thing to note is that Bob on EVA, he is collecting data from the moon's highlands. Unlike all the other experiments that we can run in low lunar orbit at this time, there, this is over the highland craters, right? So. The EVA report while in space is biome specific. Now you can just you know, do an EVA report and keep randomly trying until you get new ones. Or if you use the debug menu, which you access using Alt and F12, this is probably on the borderline of cheating. There are cheats in here, but it's very useful to show you the biomes visible in the map option, which the distant views of the planets now show the texture with all the colors and you can see what the what the developers have done essentially is uh, somebody went and drew out a nice colored map and depending upon which color you are over that determines what biome you're in so you want to find all the different colors and then try and collect science data over it such as that big pink splotch there that is actually a crater so if i fly over this and you can see actually Kerbin in the background there as well we're still floating away from this I'm gonna turn that off and I should uh, probably get Bob back inside look at him there floating in a most peculiar way far above the moon yes turn the light on just so you can see L turns on the light there's so a lot of controls which are not well documented in Kerbal Space Program the, the list of controls is quite excellent there, so I collected science data from the Midlands. That's another thing to report. We'll just store that in the capsule. Just get on. And so you can just get inside if you want to store it. And then we're still flying towards that crater. So we'll wait until we get there. You can't time accelerate while a Kerbal is holding onto a ladder. So it's best to have him in sitting inside the cabin. Bring him out and ask him, what do you see? You see more science from the moon's far side crater. You see, if because I'm in a polar orbit, just by being patient, I can get a whole bunch of science. That's 24 science per biome for the EVA report. Plus, each of those is worth 30 data, which when it goes into the lab and gets processed, gives you 150 science. Although it may take 100, it'll take like 150 days essentially to get that much science out with this level of uh, scientific expertise that we have on board, let's say. So yeah, that's a good thing to do, is to exploit this while you are in low lunar orbit. There's another crater coming up. This is the polar crater, I believe. As slow as we pass over it. And again, get ready to jump out. Take a quick look around. And yes, the moon's polar crater. Look at how much science I've collected. Again, we're going to have to wait for the science lab to process this. In fact, I think I now have so much... I'm going to start storing this in the science bay here, right, so the science lab. Keep that data, keep that data, keep, keep, keep. Ah, more to process, and to process, process. And this is all taking power, you'll notice. I've got the spacecraft lined up with the sun nicely. You could probably use more solar panels in this. Okay, and we're just transmitting these after I have copied the stuff to the lab. You don't want to transmit before because otherwise then you have to go and collect the data again, right? Oh, and now we get it. Not enough data storage to research EVA reports, right? So look, I, it's warning me. Not enough data storage to research it. Basically, I have exceeded the amount of data that can be contained in this lab. So now we reach an interesting problem, right? We've essentially maxed out the lab and it's going to take time for the data to come back. And I have all the science I can convert into it, so you're kind of left with this uh, dilemma, let's say. 
where do you leave these scientists around do you to get the the large amount of data over time or do you just fly it all back and then you know take the quick science that you can now well it turns out of course with time acceleration that you can do this relatively quickly if you want Anyway, with uh, maxed out science, I think it's time to look for some more uh, contracts here. So we have a mission to find science data from the surface of the moon. That's awesome. Temperature scans of the moon. So these are a bunch of locations here. The, the contract will expire in one day. That just means I have one day and four hours to accept them. So I'm going to accept that now. Fly by the sun. I'm... That's a good question. It says nearby the sun. So does that mean I have to be close to the sun or can it mean I can just leave Kerbal's sphere of influence? Because technically outside the sun, outside Kerbin's sphere of influence, it's the sun's sphere of influence. I should probably figure that out, right? Anyway, we've accepted this mission to find temperature data from over the moon and we have the locations marked. So these are two locations very close together on the surface of the moon, right? These are MGM or whatever. And this one... That is a space location, it has told us. So, to get the space location, we have to fly over it while in orbit. And to do that, we could just change our course and try flying over it, but that would be a really pointless waste of fuel. Instead, we can just wait, because the planet is going around Kerbin. And that means its axis is essentially rotating at the same speed as its orbit. So if I just wait for the thing to come under my orbital track, I should be able to, in theory, get this data, right? And it's just a question of waiting till the exact moment. Although, I may, I may have a, a very limited window to do this, we'll see. So I'm time accelerating from the map screen, or rather from the tracking station, because while in orbit you can only time accelerate at 50 times regular speed. So I'm going to fly this now. And it's a good idea to make sure you quick save because you might fly past this too far left or right, in which case you would want to go back to your uh, save and then adjust your orbit very slightly. I'm hoping this will be fine, but it's really hard to tell. So let's just fly up and let's see what happens. I'm not sure how wide this zone is when it's over the moon. How, that, certainly on the moon, the accuracy you have to get is quite high. But in orbit, there, I am entering site OF36W. So where is, wait a second, where, oh, quick, quick, where's the thermometer? Where's the thermometer? Good idea to have the thermometer out. Oh, man, come on. There we go. Whew, got that in time. Collected survey data for OF36W. Zero scientific value, but the important thing is it satisfied that part of the contract. And all we had to do was trigger the temperature scan at the exact right moment. Yeah, we could transmit it for nothing. <laughs> yes, why not waste my power doing that? Okay, so now we're actually going to have to land on these locations. But also, I will point out that since we've been time accelerating, I can... Uh, nope, not there. Take a look in my lab and see that the amount of data has gone on uh, up gone down and the science has gone up as if by magic because a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I guess I have very low expectations for what magic is. Okay, back to the space center. Because we of course have to time accelerate through several more orbits and we want to do this as quickly as the game will allow us, which means not actually sitting with the object in space. When you're doing it in space, you have a time, you have upper limits on how fast you can time accelerate. The map screen has no limits. That does also mean that it's quite possible that you time accelerate in the map screen and your spacecraft plows into some planet or it gets interacted with in some other way that is undesirable. Okay, I think the next time we come around, we will be passing almost right over those sites. It's hard to tell, but I think, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm hoping that I'm going to pass close enough. Regardless, we're going to have to perform uh, a landing and we're going to have to perform correct alignment on it. That is actually harder than it looks right now. And there's a, well, there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, we've landed previously on Minmus and you might have actually already tried landing on the moon if you've been following this. 
this spacecraft has about 1200 meters per second of delta V, so it takes about 600 to land, 600 to get into orbit, you know, and then there's a little bit in there for just aligning your orbits and everything, getting hooked up with the, get, getting close to the target, uh, the parent spacecraft, the mothership, as we might say. Okay, yeah, this is definitely getting nice and close. So, the game does actually include navigation tools for us. We can get a, an indicator on the nav ball if we need it. But let's just uh, prepare ourselves for this descent over, over, curve, over the moon. And I guess I should also point out that this uh, spacecraft has rotated relative to the sun because the axis that it uses is relative to the moon, which is all sorts of complicated. That means its solar panels aren't providing enough power in this configuration to do the research, so that's why I have no power. Anyway, uh, before we undock, we want to make sure we refuel our spacecraft. Assuming you have upgraded the relevant buildings, you should be able to right click and hold alt, or hold alt and right click on the tanks that are involved, and then press out to transfer the fuel outwards from that tank. So we're transferring it symmetrically, you want to transfer it out to all the tanks involved in symmetry. Similarly, the monopropellant we're going to transfer forward, and now our spacecraft is fully fueled and ready to undock. Assuming of course that Bob is on board. Here we go. Bob Kerman in orbit around Kerbin. Now you can use the RCS to move backwards there. That's pressing R and then N to do reverse thrust. Uh, if you, <laughs> if you're wondering. Now we activate our engine in preparation for descent. We're going to perform a small retrograde burn just to bring our, uh, bring basically the altitude down closer to where the target is. So just a small burn to bring us away from the spacecraft. This is important because it will calibrate our maneuver node system. You have to use this at some point. So this is now online. We're going to check our map. It looks like we're pretty close. It's really hard to judge. I want to bring the periapsis down so that we end up flying over the target at roughly at as low an altitude as we dare. And then we're going to have to perform a deceleration maneuver which will bring us over the target. Now what I do to do this is I create a maneuver and then I just drag it down until my velocity essentially hit zero. See that? Get as close to zero as I like. And take note of these burn times here. These are going to be really critical. Also target, activate navigation on this. Now due to mathematics, you know, integration, whatever, it's, I can tell you that the estimated burn is 51 seconds, but what I want to do is wait until we are half of that value before the maneuver node, and then we want to perform a 100% thrust burn. And that should bring us down to zero meters per second, essentially at the maneuver node. Now we're also about to fly over another EVA target, which I should have done earlier, but I'm just going to grab it because Bob is a daredevil, you know, thrill master extraordinaire or something. EVA and grab the science while you're doing a landing. You've recorded observations from this location. Okay, so now we're waiting for 26 seconds and we will go to 100% thrust. And then hopefully we will come to a stop very close to our target. But that won't be us on the target. This is where it actually starts to get difficult. Okay, getting close. The navigation doesn't work in reverse, unfortunately. At least not now. I've put in a bug request or a feature request. And ready to burn? Burn! Okay, so now 100% thrust all the way. What we're looking for is we want to, we'll see that our surface velocity gets very close to zero and we want to make sure we stop then. We also are hoping to see a message explaining that we are inside the target, but that's not guaranteed because we might be passing left or right off it. The important thing is we want to be moving very slowly when we get over the target, rather than 500 meters per second. So this is entirely uh, a hack, whatever, a maneuver, a trick to try and put us moving slowly very close to the target. So I'm just going to turn off the maneuver node now because that was really just to give us the timing on when to perform the burn. We're now down to 70 meters per second and I don't see anything here. Let's just turn around and see if we can see the target. There, see the target? So I can actually point at it and I can figure out where that is. Notice our velocity vector is actually passing slightly to one side of it. So I'm going to fire in this direction, hoping to bring the... the prograde velocity vector more in line with this. Nope, gotta go further. 
And of course, we are just falling down towards the surface. Oh, look, we're entering the area. Now all we need to do is just kill our lateral velocity here. So kill all the lateral velocity. This, I, I say this isn't a series for beginners, but this is clearly not a beginner's maneuver. <laughs> uh, but I guess people would want to try doing it. You know, here's the thing. Quick save is your friend. So we are in the area, we have not left the area, and are, we now have just vertical speed. When we land, we should have all the data we need. So let's just make sure we land. And I don't know what kind of gradient the surface is going to be, whether I'm going to be on a hill or not. So I'm just going to come down carefully and slowly and just bring myself to a stop. There is the shadow. It looks like we are up on the edge of a crater, so hopefully the hopefully the hill isn't too steep here. Nine meters per second. Just think about it, right? The moon's gravity is about 1.6 meters per second, I believe. So every second you're using about 1. meters per second of delta V here slowing down. So just count those off. The faster you get on the surface, the less of that you'll waste. This is essentially a, a gravity loss that you're dealing with here. But touchdown! And pretty good. If you're wobbling, by the way, RCS can really save your ship from falling over. Anyway, collect this, the temperature. Awesome. Uh, we already have temperature data from the Midlands, but that doesn't matter because we've got it for our uh, we've got it we got it for our contract. Okay, and so we can do a whole bunch more science collection, which probably isn't going to be as fruitful as I had hoped because we've already got data from the Midlands. I guess we don't have pressure data, so that's good to keep. And we have a crew report because the previous spacecraft that landed on the, the Midlands was a probe. But Mystery Goo we have, and Material Bay we already have as well. So, seismic data, that's new. What new and interesting things can you teach us about this moon that is so near to us? Now Bob gets to do the EVA dance, of course, where he does the EVA report. Which I think we actually already have a copy of that for the Midlands, but we'll, we'll save it nevertheless. Now we can actually try to stand. Uh, uh oh oh dear notice how the rocket jumped as <laughs> there as the physics kicked in okay so you can do an EVA rep oh I didn't do that correctly doesn't matter let's uh, store that once more just to be sure fly -de fly fly store the experiment oh there go on store the experiment thank you Oh wait, now I see what's going on. Uh, we already have it in there, so we just should overwrite this whole thing. Get the EVA report, get the surface sample, and that's us. We, so we have our surface sample, we have our EVA report from the surface. Look. You look up and search the sky for Kerbin. Suddenly you feel very small. Brilliant, okay. And the sample tells you, tells you the darker midland surface appears to be made up of basaltic rocks. And he's super excited to be here, can you believe that? I guess he's just like super excited and stoked for all the science he's doing. He's gonna plant a flag. Now I bet you're thinking the flags are largely just cosmetic, but it turns out they have a highly important use, which you'll find out about in the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.